So yeah, sorry for for all the issues. Uh, uh, this is a new computer, and <laughs> it's uh, there. There are some things that I have to set up. Uh, but finally, uh, yeah, the idea for today is to talk about new and future future features in, uh, for Blazor. Um, the idea is to uh, um, analyze the concept of Blazor. Maybe you don't know what Blazor is, but we will talk about this. Then we will talk about the evolution. I mean, like a timeline, including all the changes uh, during the time related to Blazor. And then we will analyze some uh, amazing features that were included in the last version uh, with .NET 6. I mean, uh, it, it was last year in November, more or less. So yeah, uh, we the, 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 there are some great uh, features that we can use in the, in the current version. And finally, at the end, we will talk about uh, future features that we will have in the next version, which is .NET 7 um, in November, more or less, of this year. Um, so yeah, let's start. Uh, so first, what is Blazor? This is the first question. Maybe um, some of you already know what is Blazor, also have experience with Blazor, but finally, let's review it again. So basically, Blazor is a um, framework that we can use in order to create web applications. It's a really gr a great uh, framework because finally, we can use c -sharp using HTML and CSS in order to create all the UI. So we don't have a lot of dependencies on JavaScript. Even we can use JavaScript. We can include JavaScript libraries and JavaScript, uh, JavaScript scripts in our application. But also, uh, I mean, the main, the main code that we will create or we will code with a Blazor is in c -sharp. If you are expert at c -sharp, you can take advantage of this technology and use all that knowledge that you already have to create amazing application. Blazor is completely free and open source, so you don't have to pay anything. And also, you have the opportunity to uh, contribute to the community um, using the repository or report issues or bugs or that kind of things. Also, Blazor is cross-platform. For example, in this case, I am using Mac. And you can use Mac, you can use Linux, or you can use Windows. It doesn't matter. Finally, Blazor is going to work very well in all of them. Um, Blazor is actually an extension of ASP.NET. So basically, we will use the ASP.NET SDK in order to get all uh, the, the features and all the libraries that are included in this SDK with this technology. And then we will extend this SDK with some additional uh, libraries. So th that's, the, that's the idea. But finally, Blazor is, is using the same libraries that we use normally in ASP.NET in order to create web applications. And also, uh, Blazor is based on, uh, based on components. Is uh, something um, really common nowadays. For example, frame libraries like React.js use this concept. So basically, you will uh, split all the logic uh, and all the UI in different pieces of uh, code that uh, are components. So basically, a, com a component has a responsibility in the UI, and you can define that responsibility depending on the scope. For example, you can create a, a component to create a user, to edit a user, to delete a user, and also another component to show the grid and all the information. You can create another component in order to um, show a resume or a summary of the, the current information, that kind of things. And finally, it, it, it's on you, all the these decisions are, are regarding the architecture, but you can uh, uh, use all the uh, many components depending on the scenario on the or the business logic. Um, so there are uh, two versions of Blazor. It's important to highlight this. I will use Blazor with assembly for all the demos that we will show today. Um, but uh, there is another version, which is Blazor server. So both technologies are the same in the code or are very similar in the code. Uh, when, when you are coding, you will feel uh, comfortable working with both because finally, yeah, are based on components and the structure, the architecture is more or less the same. But finally, regarding the architecture internally or the technology internally works uh, different. 
So for Blazor server, Blazor server, it runs in the server. So we will have a really good performance depending on the resources that we have in the server where the application is located. In Blazor web assembly is depend completely of the browser because Blazor web assembly uh, is executed in the browser using the web assembly technology. Web assembly is like a new standard that we can use in order to execute compile uh, programming language in the in the browser like Rust, like uh, for example C plus plus and also C sharp. Um, Blazor server using Nalera in order to update the client. So basically, we will have a really good performance and, and you will feel that you are executing the application in the client. But finally, the application is not uh, running in the client, it's running in the server and using Signaler is going to refresh constantly in real time uh, the application. And in Blazor Web Assembly, we use the concept of single page application, which is a concept uh, where we use one single uh, HTML file that is going to contain the whole application, JavaScript file, and all that, that, that all that kind of things, uh, all these things in order to execute the application. Um, a Blazor server is really good uh, when we have a, a, a large amount of data because finally all of this data is going to be processed, um, is going to be um, handled by the server. But in Blazor Web Assembly, all of the all of this is going to be executed in the client, and as you know, it depends on the browser that we are using. It depends on the resources that the the client has, and um, all the uh, specs of the of the computer that we are using. So, yeah, in some cases, maybe it's is is better if we have uh, um, all this logic in the server. But finally. In some other scenario, especially when we are working with CSS and we want to perform some validation in the client, maybe web assembly is a better option. So depending on the scenario, let us Blazor server or or Blazor web assembly could be better. Um, also, it's very important that with Blazor web assembly, since since uh, this application is running in the client, we can use the concept of progressive web app. Uh, this means that we can install the application in our computer and we can extend the permissions of this application to, for example, show notifications and also use a local database in order to use the application offline. So basically, yeah, that's the, the main goal of uh, Progressive Web App. Um, have uh, the application, have some, some, some features in the client in order to use the application uh, in case we have connection issues. Both uh, options are really good for .NET developer because finally you guys, uh, you will uh, use C-sharp uh, uh, in, um, in stance of JavaScript. If you are expert at JavaScript, if you really know .NET, if you feel expert at .NET, the Blazor server or Blazor Web Assembly are really good option to create web applications. Um, so regarding the timeline, we have like an evolution of Blazor here. So you can see that we have a preview version in 2018. Uh, in this version, we were we were um, sorry. Let me let me use the. Uh, let me see if I can use here the presenter. Uh, yeah, here. Okay, yeah, we were using Mono in that case, and now, as you know, Mono and all the things that Samarin were using, and also .NET, everything is using the same standard, which is .dot uh, .NET standard, and is included by default in .NET five, .NET six, and all of these versions. So finally, at the beginning, we were using some Mono libraries, but now is is done is .NET Core. Um, we 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 saw the HPA application at the beginning, so uh, it was great to know that uh, Blazor with assembly were using this concept that is very popular right now in all the frameworks and libraries in JavaScript. Also, uh, uh, in this in this uh, for this age in, in that time, we we were able to use Blazor server. Blazor server was released first, and then. Uh, Blazor web assembly was released. So this is important to highlight that. Then in 2019, we have the possibility to use a, a first version of Blazor 
uh, using netcore and also the concept of shared component, which is a concept that we can use in order to create components that we can reuse in many in many places of the application. And also uh, we started to use .NET standard in that in that case um, not completely because uh, we were targeting don't net uh, 3.1 but uh, we 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 uh, we could start to use .NET standard libraries in order to include in our project but then when we started with .NET 5 we could uh, use .NET standard by default this specification um, so yeah, we we finally we 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 didn't have to use uh, to to do something else in order to use this specification because it is by default in .NET um, five, and also we have a lot of issues. We, we have a lot of improvement here. Uh, for example, CSS isolation. We have the possibility to uh, separate the CSS um, classes. And the component. So we have two files now the, uh, for for both um, for for uh, that that things. Also, we have the possibility to use virtualization when we have a lot of uh, data, a, a large data in a grid. So we can use virtualization in order to improve the performance. Uh, very important, the ones of size was improved because finally this was the 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 issues that we have at the beginning with, with Blazor WebAssembly, when you deploy the application in a server and the client is going to access the application, we have we will see a small delay, like a loading, like a spinner, uh, trying to get the one's uh, file, which is really large. All the .NET libraries and all the components used in, or, uh, in order to execute um, Blazor in the, in the browser. So finally, we have to reduce a lot of this size in order to improve the, the experience of the user. And also uh, another improvement related to performance was lazy loading. So now we have the possibility to specify where a component, where, where a, a library uh, is going to be, um, it's going to be downloaded uh, from, from the client. So yeah, basically uh, the resources uh, are now on demand. We, are, we, don't, we don't have to get the whole application at the beginning. So now with .NET 6, we have a lot of uh, a new improvement that I will show you today. We have a new template now with uh, some options that we will review. Also, we have the possibility to use Hub Reload, very important. With Hub Reload, we can see all the changes in real time. We don't have to stop and execute the application constantly all the time. We have the possibility to specify required, param required parameters in a component. We have also um, a half of time completion, which is a new option, but this is in preview right now. But this is a really good option to improve the performance uh, when we are uh, coding and then when we deploy the application in order to uh, improve the experience of, of the, the, the client. Also, we have the possibility to specify a wrong boundaries, uh, which is our option that we have in order to control better the errors in the UI. Also, this is some an amazing feature, but finally, this is an, this is mm, in preview right now. But we have the possibility to create components for React and Angular. So this is a really good option when you have a React application and you want to include a Blazor component because they, they maybe uh, you have a lot of logic that you can to share from your uh, from C sharp. Uh, you have some library that you want to include, create a component in order to process a lot of information, that kind of things. So you can create a component in, in Blazor and then you can include this component in React. So this is really amazing. But finally, as I said before, this is in preview. We will see a demo of this as well. So what, what we will have in .NET 7 this year, so the hub reload is improved, improved uh, because finally some files are not included right now in, 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 the, in the hub reload pro process. So when depending on the file that you change, you will see the changes in real time or not. So finally, they include more files, especially uh, for Blazor server. Also, uh, NetMaui actually yesterday was announced the new version. Um, this is like a 
final release. So this is our official version that we can use in order to create new applications um, for all the uh, platforms. Uh, we can we can reuse uh, base code in order to create application for mobile devices, desktop, and also web applications. So this is great. And Blazor, we will be a really great option in order to create this application because finally you only need to know C sharp, CSS, and um, HTML. So with this knowledge, you can create application for all the devices and technology that we currently have. Sorry. Oh my God, is um, okay. Uh, also, the, we have a new console output. We will see this feature uh, actually in the demos. And also we have uh, inject service into custom validation attributes in Blazor. This is uh, something that we couldn't uh, do in the past. But finally, uh, you will see that we always have like a workaround in Blazor. So we have a possibility to do something in different ways. But finally, with this improvement, we can, uh, you know, code faster and uh, use these features in order to create a better code in, in our application, in our architecture. Okay, so let's see um, new features in Blazor 6. So this is the new template. With the new template, we will be using all the new, the new features in C Sharp. So we have explicit using by default. So we will see less code in our application. Also, we have the possibility to use top level statement by default. That's another option that we will reuse a lot of code. Uh, all these options are, I mean, all these features, these two features are related to C Sharp, not Blazor directly. But finally, with the, net, the new template in Blazor, we will see these features uh, by default, implemented by default. Also, we have uh, the Bootstrap uh, 5.1 included by default. This version doesn't need JavaScript, very important to highlight this. So yeah, uh, that's the, the goal with Blazor, use less JavaScript, so that's great. And also Bootstrap uh, 5 is really, is faster. Uh, we have uh, CSS is related by default. That's another important thing that we can highlight. I will show you a uh, random pork. This is uh, when you create a template, when you create application, it's going to assign um, a different port uh, for every new application. Because in, in the past, we were having problem with this because if you create two Blazor application, probably we will have complete running the application at uh, two applications at the same time. So now we, we don't have that, that problem. So let's see these features in the code. Okay, I will discard this. And now, yeah, we will see the code now here. So um, this is the new template. Um, in the new template, for example, if we go to program, uh, we can see now, oh, sorry for this, let me, let me see if I can. Yeah, reduce this here. Okay. Yeah. So now we have here uh, this code, and um, you will see that uh, we don't have, for example, uh, the name space specified here. We don't have uh, uh, all the uh, normal library that we have to import in order to use um simple commands in 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 c sharp for example all the the system system dot something uh all that kind of namespace that we normally have to include we we don't have it here because finally we are using all the c sharp uh features so the, it's very minimal it's this file here also uh we can go for example to um, uh sorry properties and here in properties we will see a different port here and also another different port here in for ESTTPS, e https and also http uh, so this is assigned randomly to the new project also uh, another improvement is the library that we can we can see here in WW root. We can see bootstrap and this bootstrap include by default is the version five. Right? Here you can see bootstrap 5.1. Okay, so yeah, we have all this improvement. This uh, this is a, a new 
a new template with a lot of uh, easier. In this case, I created this template using .NET 7.0, but this feature was included in .NET uh, 6, okay? Um, and that's it. Uh, as you can see here, we have Blazor WebAssembly SDK, but finally, this SDK, the base of this SDK is uh, the web or ASP.NET SDK. So as you can see, uh, and uh, as, as you showed you before, we were using this, the same SDK, the same space, the same libraries, but we extend, you know, we include more libraries in order to use all the Blazor technology here. So that's the, the idea. And uh, well, that's it. Uh, that's the first uh, feature that we can highlight related to uh, Blazor. So let's continue. Uh, okay, so now we have hover lot, very important feature because with with this feature we can uh, see all the changes that we are performing in the application in real time. So uh, we can use Visual Studio. Visual Studio 2022 has this new button here, hover lot, that we can use in order to perform that, or we can um, use .NET Watch in the in the console in order to do perform the same in order to see the changes in, in real time so let's do it in this case i will use dotnet wash because i i am using mac and i don't have um visual studio here remember visual studio is only only is only has compatibility with windows and also we have uh windows form a uh, visual studio format which is another version that we can use but i prefer um, I prefer uh, uh, Visual Code. So in this case, I will use for this application the command .NET Wash. And then we have here, oh, let me see if there is, yeah, I will here, I will try to up to windows here in order to see the changes. Okay. So we have here, here, and I will try to, oh no, let me see. <laughs> okay, let me try again. Okay, it doesn't work. Sorry, <laughs> this is a big problem in Mac. We, I, I don't know how to handle the, the Windows, uh, but uh, let, let's perform a changes. For example, uh, we have here counter, okay? Um, and we have the possibility to, uh, you know, count uh, using this button. And let's see, a chain, let's perform a chain. For example, I can say here counter one, save the changes okay and after save the changes we will see here in the console uh yeah we, we will uh, the the console is going to detect that a file was changed in this case counter dot razor and it's going to show that uh, the changes were uh reload so let's see if we can see now, yeah, we can see now counter one here. And yeah, if we perform any change in, in the component, we will see exactly the same behavior. For example, if we go here, um, we change index and we say, hey, hello, soft serve, save the changes, go back, and we can see here, hello, sir, in real time. So we don't have to perform any additional action in order to see the changes in real time. So very important to highlight, I am not debugging the application at this moment. Uh, there is an option in Visual Code that I can use in order to debug the application here using an extension. But finally, this is not support even for Visual Studio 2022. 
So we could, we can note the book and see the changes in real time for Blazor web uh, for Blazor web assembly. For Blazor server server, this is possible right now. But for, for Blazor web assembly, this is not possible. So finally, yeah, we have to design the application, execute the application, and you know, uh, build our code or or coding with without debugging, and then use debugging when we have a, a specific issue or something important to to inspect. But in general, yeah, we cannot use that at the at this moment. Okay. So let's see more changes, more features. Okay, so we are ready. And by the way, you can move the windows by using mission control on MacBook. So you, you just swipe the touch board with three fingers and you can move windows around the desktops just to let you know. Okay, perfect, perfect. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks for that. Uh, okay, so yeah, we have hover up and also, uh, we have another uh, important feature here, error boundaries. So basically, uh, in the past, if we were, um, if we had some issues in the code in, in the component, we, we need to include a try cache statement in order to control the error. So uh, yeah, that was the, only way in order to control that uh, when the error was uh, related to the um, uh, UI. And finally, um, this is something that, um, you know, Blazor by default was controlling with a, a generic error. But finally, with error boundary, we have the possibility to um, get the error, catch the error, and also show something a specific, something um, um, depending on the situation or, or you know something uh, personalized. We can personalize the 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 error that we can to show you that we can show you uh, that, that we can show to the user that we can show to the user. Okay, uh, so let's see this uh, this feature. Let's see this demo. So go back to um, Visual Code. In this case, I will stop the execution. I will discard the changes that I perform. And I will move to another branch where I have this uh, implementation. So here in this branch, I have here, uh, let's see, error boundary, yes. And we can go to my layout. Uh, oh, let's see, we have an issue here. I think I discard the changes by, by mistake. Let me see if I have the changes here. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. No, no problem. We can use another branch. So here in this uh in this particular component in my layout, I have this. Oh, sorry. Uh I have a error boundary uh, implemented. So with error boundary, we have also the possibility to add uh, two sections, child content, uh, where we will specify the um, the um, uh, the content that we will render inside this section, and also error content, which is the error that we will show if something fails rendering this. So if we go to con to counter. Uh, for example, uh, we can add an section here. Actually, we have the section here. So you can see the section here, throw new section. So if I try to use this button in particular, increment, in, I, I have I can call this, this function in, increment count, uh, we will see an error in the application. But this error is like a, um, something that I am controlling with this error boundary. So yeah, the application is not going to, to have a, a strange section. Uh, instead of that, it's going to show this particular error that, that I am setting here. So let's see this, this demo in particular. Uh, I will show the terminal and I will use, oh, let, me, let me reuse this one. Yeah, I will use the command .net wash to execute the application. 
Okay, so we, we have the application running. It's exactly the same template, the template by default. And if I perform a click here, we can see the error that I am controlling here. So in this case, um, the application is not normally, it shows, oh, sorry, sorry. Um, so normally the application is, is showing a generic error, but in this case, we have the possibility to, to see something specific or, or more details of something, you know, uh, with a better user experience. If I go back, for example, and I remove this uh, error boundary here, in order to keep only the body here, Okay, and I save the changes. Okay, in this case, um, as you can see, um, yeah, this uh, in, in this case, I I cannot use hop reload. This is the the the, the issue that I I told you before. So we the hop reload uh, needs some improvement because we changing some cha some files, some specific files or some code, we cannot um, uh, hop reload the application. We need to uh, stop and or restart the application. Uh, so yeah, in this case, I will restart the application. I will restart here and. I will perform a click. So now you can see the uh, generic error that we all, uh, always have in Blazor. So the idea is to avoid it kind of things that is very normal in Blazor and use something more, you know, with, with a description, with um, more details or something more, you know, um, uh, with a better uh, UI experience for, for the user. So that's it for this feature. So let's go back and see other features in Blazor. Uh, so we have two new elements for the components, page title and head content. With these new elements, we can specify a different title for each component in the application. And also about head content, we can add more meta um, meta elements to the head, depending on the component that uh, that we are we are using. So basically, uh, in the past, this was possible, but using um, using C sharp code with JavaScript. So if you really need to change the page title, you can you know call um, a JavaScript routine in order to uh, change it manually using a script. But uh, with these new elements now, this is not uh, necessary. I mean, uh, we can use only these uh, elements and save times and create a better code, uh, a code that we can read easily. Uh, also, in the past, we were using some libraries for this. Um, if you will find a lot of libraries in, in, in Nougat related to Blazor. Uh, in, in some scenarios, when we don't have the possibility to do something with C-Sharp, uh, we can get um, a library that uh, combines JavaScript with uh, C-Sharp in order to perform that action that you want to do. So yeah, let's see this feature in particular. Um, so. Uh, actually, this is the same, um, the same, uh, the same branch. I have. I think I have the code here. Let me um, revert the changes here. Okay, and now here uh, I have. Yeah, I am using in this counter. I am using the page title and also the, the um, adding a meta description here with uh, this content, which is component description. It's very, it's very simple, but this is enough in order to see how this works. So in this case, I can use again .NET wash in order to see the changes and show you this new feature. So if we go here to counter, you can see here, uh, can, I can close that. You can see here the title, which is counter. Okay, so now if I go to index, we can see here index. If we go to fetch data, we can see here in this in this case weather forecast. So for each um, uh, co uh, component, 
in this case, um, we have a different um, a different uh, title, and we can easily change it. Just change it here, for example, content one, saving the changes, and now we can see a new title here, counter one. Okay, so yeah, basically this is the the this is the the feature. If we use um, Dev Tools uh, here in the browser, we can also see here in the elements in the head we can see this um, the met the meta description that we added for this specific component here. So this is important because finally, for example, for um, all the um, all the, all the browsers that um, you know you want to improve the the results in in Google or Bing or that kind of things, uh, you can use these uh, meta elements in order to to let the browser know um, let the the search engine know uh, what is the content that you are show, showing. And also, uh, this is important when you have, for example, when you want to have interpolation with Angular and other kind of JavaScript library that use a lot these uh, meta elements in the head. So perfect. This is another another feature here. Let's continue with the next one. Uh, error. Oh, sorry. Error page. Okay. So we have. Require parameters. This is a new attribute that we can add for a property in the component, and we can highlight this this property in order to see a warning in the in the code that it is it is going to notify us that um, we need to pass a, a value for for that specific parameter. So we we will not have a, a, an exception. Or, a, or an error, we will have just a warning uh, that is going to notify us that something is missing. That's it. That's the idea. But it's very important because finally, when we have a lot of components and we have components calling other components, it's really difficult to know what are the parameters that we have to pass. Um, and normally, we we see some absurd. Oh, Normally, we see some um, some issues when we are executing the application, so we can avoid those issues in, in the, during the execution. Um, so uh, let's see that um, let's see that uh, feature. Uh, yeah, we can go back to counter. Um, we can let me. I will change the branch because I think I have this implemented in another branch here, which is. Uh, require parameter. So for require parameter, I I did a change in net not menu, and I created this title here. So this title property has the 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 attribute parameter and also the attribute editor required. The idea is to use to use this title here in this part of the application and um, in the, in the in the header. So yeah, let's see this this application in particular. This this change. Let's restart the application, and we can see now uh, the application running. And here, normally, we have a title by default, but as you can see, we we don't we don't see anything here. It's empty. So basically, this is because we need to pass the parameter. If we go to uh, um, main layout. In main layout, we will see a uh, not menu here. So not menu now has a parameter, a required parameter that we have to pass. And here we can see the warning. The warning is is showing us that um, a parameter is is expected. Uh, the parameter is title, and we are not providing any value for this parameter. So we will we can pass the parameter here, and we can say, for example. Uh, Blazor app, something very simple. Save the changes. How reload is working, and now we can see here Blazor app. Okay, so that's the the idea. Something pretty simple, but finally with this we can avoid a lot of issues running the application 
in um, production. Um, yeah, we can we can avoid the issues. Um, you know, uh, controlling these kind of things during uh, when we are coding. Uh, okay, we have another important uh, feature, which is, which is query string attribute. With this uh, attribute, we can supply, uh, um, we, we can um, set a parameter, uh, or we can, we can specify that a parameter will be supplied by, by the URL, by the, the query from the URL, by the um, parameter that we normally add in the URL in this way, using uh, yeah, the, the query uh, syntax in, 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 the, in, in the URL. So basically it's something pretty simple. I, I have to use this, uh, I remember uh, without this new attribute <laughs> and the way was um, cache the, uh, the parameter in the on parameter set event in the controller get the value and assign the value to the property. So in the past, I had to do that. And now we don't have to do that. Uh, we, don't, we don't have to implement that kind of code. We, we can only uh, assign this attribute to the property and that's enough. It is going to compare. The name of the, the, the attribute here, the, the name of the parameter in, in the query, in the, in the URL, and then the name of the property that we are using in order to um, assign the, by, the value correctly. That's it. We don't have to do something else. So it's pretty simple. Let's see a demo for this uh, new feature. Um, go back to Visual Code. And then I will, let me, I will come back. I will revert the changes. And now we can come back, we can go to query string. And we can go to counter and here in counter, you can see uh, the configuration. So we have this current count here. Okay, it's starting in zero. I, I, am, I am setting a default value, which is zero here in order to start the, 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 the from, from zero, the, the, the counter. Um, but finally, yeah, we can change it here. And also we can supply this parameter from the query in the URL. So yeah, in the URL, we can add this current count, set a value there. And by default, this is going to start from, from that value. I mean, it's going to discard this change, this default value, and it will start with the, 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 the value that we are setting from the URL. So let's see how this works. Um, we will, I will restart the application here. I will go back here. Yes, I will go to counter and counter is working fine as you can see. And, it, and it's starting from zero, right? But now I will add the parameter here. Let me see if I can, yeah, use this here. Now you can see here how I assign the parameter. I can use, for example, current count equals five. And now you can see here that we are starting from five. This is very important when we have to see the, <coughs> sorry, when we want to see the details of a specific element or something like that, and we have to pass the ID in the URL. So now it's pretty simple to cache that value in this way. So yeah. I mean, we are simplifying the, the, the process. That, that's it. Because in the past, as I said before, we could implement this, but in a different way, creating, you know, coding more and creating some, some, some things that finally now are pretty simple. So let's add this again and go back to the slides and continue with other improvements. Oh. Sorry. Okay. Um, okay, we have another other important feature that we can highlight highlight here. Um, so we have um, um, so we have render component from JavaScript. 
Um, this is very important. Well, the idea is to avoid JavaScript in, in our Blazor code, but it's something that is really difficult right now. So finally, if we want to create an uh, interpolation between JavaScript and Blazor, we can um, um, call some Blazor component from JavaScript. Uh, in the past, it was really difficult to, to do this. We have a dynamically rendered components, so we can use genetics in order to create genetic components and uh, dynamically render this component using different types. We have a new proper, a new event, which is focus on, on navigation, uh, focus on element on navigation. This is very useful in order to keep the focus uh, depending uh, when, when the user is navigating between different components. Also, we have the possibility to generate Angular and React component. I said, I, I, I talked about this before. Um, basically, with this feature, we can create a specific component to share in existing React and Angular application. Uh, I will show you a demo of this uh, soon. And uh, we have also the, uh, the feature related to ahead of time completion. This is very important because we will improve the experience coding for Blazor and also we will improve the execution of uh, Blazor in, in production. We're using this feature is in preview right now, but there are other uh, improvements that we will have about this feature in the next version. Remember, DOMNET 7 is not a long term support version, which this means that we can use that version in production, but finally the idea is to migrate to the long term support version. We, uh, and this version will be uh, .NET 8, okay, for next year. So if you want to keep your application, you know, you don't want to, to have issues in your current application, if you already have in production, if your application is fine and you don't want to, you know, to include more features that we will have in .NET 7, you can stay in 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 the in .NET 6 for for long time and then wait for the, uh, .NET 8. Okay, is the is the best way actually. But if you are starting a new project and um, or you want to create a proof of concept. You can you can use actually .NET 7 in order to see all the new features that uh, we can we can use uh, in the in this new version. Okay, so let's see let's see this um, this demo related to oh let me stop here because yeah we can see some issues some conflicts there. Let me show you this uh, feature. Um, we have blazor ones no sample main sample spin it spin it core blazor and uh, js component yeah this project i think this is fine yeah okay so we have many projects here actually <laughs> but really quick we have a react application and angular application for this case, I will show you React app with Blazor. Okay, I will I I will not show you Angular, but it's, it's basically the same. We have a lot of uh, things here that we have that are already compiled, but we have to compile all this project in order to have um, the project running. There are many things that are in preview right now and are. This is a simple demo. I mean, something that finally this is not how the application is going to work in 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 production okay so yeah but with this we we will have an idea about how this works and and how this feature will help us in the future we have a lot of yeah this kind of uh, um, functions in order to uh, translate uh, all the code that we have in Blazor uh, in um, JavaScript, because finally, you know, in JavaScript, normally we use camel case, um, uh, and in in C sharp, normally we use Pascal case. So we have a lot of yeah code utilities that kind of things. But the most important thing here is this application Blazor app generating yes yes uh, yes um components. So basically, with this application. We have a an, an simple component in, in a, a simple component in React 
we can use the attribute generate angular and generate react in order to generate this component for these specific technologies we have some logic here all the logic is is as you know is using c sharp we don't have any javascript uh, um, code here and also yeah we have like a some code, some libraries, and some, some things added that we we need to to use in order to um, complete the implementation. But in the future, the idea is to keep the focus only here in Counter Razor and Counter Razor CSS to create the, the the styles and and the component, and that's it. Then we have to add a library in order to to generate this for Angular and React, and that's it. I mean that's the future, but for now we have you know a lot of a lot of things here that I I don't want to show you because finally uh, the idea is just to understand the, the goal of this. So uh, we will we can execute this project in particular uh, Blazor app generating uh, JS components, and then we will execute React app with Blazor. So React app with Blazor is going to use the component generated uh, in in Blazor. That's the, the, the idea, right? So let's execute it. So we can navigate to Blazor app generating JS components. And here we can use .NET Wash in order to execute this Blazor project. Let's see if we don't have issues. Okay, it's running, it's running Fine. Okay. Perfect. We we have to add a new terminal, and in the new terminal, we we will navigate to Reap app with Blazor. Okay, and we can use here npm start in order to execute this application. I already used npm install in order to execute the application. So now we have this Reap application running. And we can use add Blazor counter up. Oops, Blazor is not defined. Let me see what is going on here. We have any issues here? No. We are in Blazor app. Blazor app generating JS component. Yeah, is this one? Mm. Yeah, is this one is this application that we have to execute? Uh, we have no here. Okay, is it the oh, Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, the issue here is because uh, I add a s here <laughs> in the code. Sorry, this is some mistake, right? Uh, let me search here. Package. Yeah. Okay, this is a mistake here. I can save now and I will stop this execution and execute it once again. Okay. Okay, now we have the, the reapplication running again. And now, yeah, we can use add Blazor counter in, in order to, to use the Blazor um, component between inside this um, reapp application. So we can use the functionality, which is, is pretty simple. We can use callback in order to uh, perform like a action in the React application. So the idea is to call something from, from Blazor in React.js. We can do that as well. And also, yeah, we have here the possibility to remove this counter that we added before. Uh, every counter is, uh, is um, working independently and uh, yeah are, are different components that we are adding so finally this is pretty simple i mean it's something uh, that finally we cannot relate with something real in in a real application but uh, with this demo we can have an idea about about the possibilities that we have in the future in order to use blazor in rehab and angular application this is really important finally is still in preview but we will have some improvement about this in the next version in, in domnet 7 the version that is is coming um so let's see sorry uh, let's see here uh, what we have here so 
Next, uh, next to this, uh, we have um, um, feature for .NET 7. We will have some new features in this version that we will release this year. Um, so we have a new console output. We already we already saw this in the console that I am using right now. We have some icons here, some emojis that help us to understand what the application is doing in in that step or in that command specifically. So yeah, that's the idea. It's pretty simple, but finally, is an improvement uh, for speci specifically for for the developers and to have a better experience using the the console, the terminal. About hub reload, as you can see before, we have some scenarios where we cannot perform the whole reload successfully. Uh, so we will have a better performance, I'm uh, sorry, a, a better support in whole reload in, in the future, especially for um, Blazor server application. And also the idea is to have the possibility to use whole reload when we are debugging in Blazor web assembly. Currently, this is not possible. As I said before, we can start the application, we can perform the changes and, and see the changes in real time, but we cannot debug the application and inspect what the application is doing internally. But the idea is to have this feature in .NET 7. Remember, um, this is, um, we, we are not close. I mean, we have a lot of time until November to have this version. So probably, probably all of this feature will not be ready for that version and we will to wait until um, dominant eight in order to see this feature. But that's the idea. I mean, the plan is to have this feature running in dominant seven. Um, also, we have now the possibility to inject services in custom validation attribute. It's very important because finally we use this a lot in Blazor in order to validate, for example, a specific field in the in a form. Okay. So it's, 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 it's um a better way in order to do that. And uh, in the past we were not able to inject um services and now we are able to do that. Here we have a a simple uh a simple demo about this. Also um now we have the possibility to use NetMaui. As I said yesterday, was released a, a new version, but and and we we still need to use Visual Studio 2022 in preview in order to use it. It's a little complicated, but it, the idea is to have all of these features in Blazor and use it in order to create uh, apps for all the platform, multi-platform apps. Um, so yeah, that's really important um, to highlight and yeah it, it, with uh, with um, NetMaui we also have the possibility to create apps with using uh, XAML uh, syntaxes with C sharp like Xamarin for example but at least from my side I think it's better to use Blazor because finally HTML and CSS is a better way to create UIs and you have the whole control over the things that you are doing. And there are more support right now for CSS than AXANL. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's a, a personal opinion, but I prefer use Blazor for, for everything because finally, yeah, is I, I feel uh, more comfortable working with this and I need um, less knowledge about internal things or uh, some spec specification that only Microsoft is using. That's that's the problem, right? Because uh, XANL and all these uh, libraries that Xamarin use are uh, related to Microsoft technology, but CSS and HTML is a standard that everybody can use. Um, so yeah, that's it. Uh, I have some resources uh, here. Uh, you you have the possibility to access the repo that I, I am using for these features. And also uh, you can see all the features related to Blazor, but also related to .NET in general in, in this article in dead blocks. Uh, actually, there are three articles because in every preview, we have a list of new features. So we have preview one, preview two, uh, preview three. 
And yeah, the, I suggest to read that, I mean, really quick to um, just try to understand the, the features that are, that are coming and, and we will able to, to use in, in these versions. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, sorry for all the issues that, that I have for this presentation. I, 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 I will, I will present another, uh, another talk in the future and I will, I will show you something really great and so, something really interesting as well. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. So if you have questions, concerns, something to share about Blazor, uh, yeah, you can, you can do it. I do have a question. Do we have time to to discuss a couple of things? Of course. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, just a quick one. So I'm really curious about that part where where you were using uh, Blazor component in React application. Mm -hmm. um, so how it works exactly? Is it just generate uh, JavaScript code uh, by using those attributes, or it's calling Web Assembly from the Reactor application? Yeah, for that, let me show you the code again because I need something very important. Um, here in the React app, we have to create like a contract in order to consume that that um, that component. So we have to create this Blazor React uh, JS uh, component here. Um, yeah, there are many 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 things that we have to to add here in order to control all the changes inside the 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 um the component the the, the blazor component but also we have to cre yeah create this contract here so we are importing blazor reapp here uh this blazor reapp is a um, javascript file that is generated by the um, uh, oh sorry sorry no no, I am confused. This Blazor React is all of this logic that we have here, right? And this counter is like a contract that has all the properties that we need to use, or we will we can interact from React to Blazor. So as you can see, we don't have any logic here. All the logic is in Blazor, but uh, anyway, we have to add all these uh, properties here in order to uh, create that. Mm, the, we, we have some hooks here and and yeah I, this is the this is the only thing that i understand i mean uh i i know that blazor uh, this is generating um i i got like a javascript file mm -hmm. that react is going to use we need all of this obviously we in the future we will need we will not need this i mean the idea is to remove completely this blazor react yes we will use a, a generic library that we will consume. And we only need in, in React to use to create this counter JS. Okay. Using this hood here, use Blazor. We will use this hook, this hook, but from a library, not from, from this specific file that we have here. So we will use this from a library. We can create all the properties, and that's it. Uh, we we can um specify the location of our component and then um this is going to yeah this is going to work that this is how this works right now but in the future is going to be uh, we will simplify i mean the the <laughs> or where the blazer thing is going to simplify this this logic okay got it yeah thank you thanks a lot for answer so i assume that a lot of things gonna be improved in the future i have one more question it's more of a um broader thing to discuss uh, so i see blazer is improved a lot uh to compare what what this was like a year or, or a couple of years ago uh, but there are a lot of things that are still in progress there are a lot of things to finalize um just your personal opinion would you mm -hmm. recommend it to use it like for for a, for a big mature enterprise project or it would be better to wait till all the things gonna be you know finalized polished and get some proper support from microsoft so just your opinion on that yes yes as you said uh there are a lot of 
things that we need in Blazor and we don't have it yet. So this is important to highlight. For example, we don't have a really good library in order to use Canvas uh, in C sharp. I mean, the idea is to use only C sharp, not JavaScript. So the idea is from from C sharp, like a draw a, a, a some uh, you know some mm -hmm. image or some elements in a HTML using Kanban. This is not possible right now. I I try many libraries and those libraries are are not good. Are very slow, very difficult to use. And JavaScript is the best option if you want to do that, for example. Mm -hmm. If you have a lot of HTML elements and you want to create some effects in the application and a really good experience for the user, for example, something like a, a store like, like Amazon with all the features that Amazon have, probably Blazor is going to be very slow in, in that scenario because you will have to combine a lot of C-sharp code with JavaScript and a lot of C CSS. So there are so many scenarios that Blazor is not good and I don't suggest to use Blazor for that. But there are many other scenarios where, Bla where Blazor is really good. For example, if you want to create a dashboard, if you want to create administration tool, that kind of tool that normally have a lot of groups, a lot of, uh, you know, um, grids with insert, delete, uh, um, and, you know, the, the common commands that we can perform for every item. Blazor is really good in those scenarios because you can reuse a lot of code from c -sharp. You can use libraries like Mod Blazor in order to potentialize the application and write code quickly. I mean, in two days or three days, you can have an application running and also you can create the backend in, in, in .NET as well uh, and the API, and you can have you know, a really good integration between Blazor and, and, and that API. So in those scenarios, Blazor is really good, but in the, in the other that I mentioned before, is it, I don't suggest to use Blazor uh, right now for, for that. Got it. Yeah, thank you very much, Francois. So let, let's hope in the future we would be able to use Blazor for everything and forget about JavaScript finally. <laughs> but yeah, let's see how it goes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's the plan. That's the plan. Uh, actually, with these uh, components that we are that we can see here, uh, uh, this component that we can use in, in JavaScript, in React or an Angular application, probably the idea with Blazor is to have another option to create with apps and also create interpolation or an integration with other um, with other uh, web web technologies because finally the future is micro front end the idea is to create a small apps and integrate all these small apps uh, uh, together in order to use uh, the best feature of every technology that's the, the idea um, so yeah, ba basically with Blazor, we will have the possibility to create many web apps and many components, but finally the integration with other technologies is, uh, is a better approach. Got it, thank you. More questions, concerns? Comments about Blazor. If someone have experience with Blazor already, migrate an application to Blazor or, or something to comment about uh, the experience. Uh, yeah, uh, this is open. You can you can share your your experience here and talk about that later. Yeah, 